this is a little controversial, but uh, you've been such a big part of this entire thing. Which is why I'm going to give you the possibility to cast a vote as a unit. You think this is a good idea? I certainly do, Alan. I certainly do. In my opinion, this affects you more than anyone else. And I will not oppose your play. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Red Moon role-playing. So... What's it going to be? What have you voted? I look uh, over to Vincent with a slight hint of anxiety. I walk away from the coterie and toward the Torrid or delegation. I... <laughs> have a few seconds of a slight pause. Because a little part of me, just a little part, starts to think, wait a minute. <laughs> if he hadn't given us this vote and it was going to be a draw, then, then he would have to be the decider. But ah, now, now, now it's us. Uh, if anyone doesn't like the results, it might look badly on us. Oh well, I'll have to deal with that, I guess. So what? Fine. Well, my prince... Weighing the options, uh, honestly, we believe it to be more an opportunity than a burden. A win-win, either way. So, four! An excited, terrifying rush runs through the veins of the kindred present as they realize they will now share their city with the Lasombra. And Prince Jackson takes a few steps forward towards Malenkov. Jackson checks his bindings to ensure they're secure and removes the stake. Asking him to speak now, for it will be the last time he does so. Amalikov is still hunched over the chair or on the chair and he's slowly raising his head up. He's looking around. The light is a little much for him and he's squinting trying to figure out what's going on and in a slow and calculated manner he says you know what you've done you've just allowed a mass genocide of your own kind do you seriously think you will be safe have you learned nothing from previous revolts and wars with us? I don't give a shit if I die. What I care about is the future of the Sabbat and my clan fleeing like from their problems from the entire enemy line. Fuck you. Fuck Telly. Fuck the Amici, Noctis and their ridiculous plans. I hope the shadows of guilt eat you up and the inside for the rest of your miserable, undead existences. Jackson gives Yara the choice of how to end her clanmate. He has brought Lodin's broadsword for which he is famed and offers it should Sierra wish to take the merciful road. She takes it from him and uncomfortably hefts the blade, placing the tip against Malenkov's collarbone. And with a calculated swing, she parts his head from his shoulders, and his body drops, rapidly crumpling to ash in the air. The prince lays a hand on Sierra's shoulder, takes the sword from her, and turns her to face the other kindred. He lowers his head to her left ear and whispers loud enough for most of the silent vampires to hear. Sierra, welcome to the Camarilla. I wrinkle my nose a little, nothing really pleasant about watching someone turn to ash, but it seems to have gone well. I am looking around a little, a little anxious. My attention does for a moment go to Alan, and then just quickly, my sire, what, 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 was, she, was she watching when, when I spoke? Um, no, she wasn't. I, well, no one's probably watching me, no one at all. They'd see me shrink just a little. She'd watch. I looked, Alan. I, uh, as you look at me, you see me looking 
somewhere between shocked and thoughtful in my mind, having spaced out a bit, going back to thoughts of watching public executions, like people still do, even in this country. I never done it myself, though. Certainly not with a broadsword. Well, I think that went well. Yeah, I guess that's the s- start of something. It certainly is. Prince Jackson, Sheriff Damien. Ah. Uh. I'm currently stood behind Brett, or behind his chair. Apologies for breaking up the happy mood. I'm sure everyone has places to be, so I will keep this brief. This horribly burned, ugly, ugly Torridor was providing sanctuary to the now decapitated Malenkov. It was from his club that we acquired the La Sombra and brought him to you. We had rather hoped that Mr. Stryker here would have met his end or otherwise fled the city, but he has the audacity to not only attend this meeting, but do it brazenly, knowing what we know of Malenkov, that he was a butcher, a walking breach of the masquerade. He was complicit in working with a member of the Sabbat. And so I would beseech you, Prince Jackson, now for our rewards, before the entire court of this city, and for my reward, to be the use of that great broadsword of yours, so I might finish the existence of this... What? ...scarred degenerate. Annabelle did... Toreador Primogen stands up. What are you talking about? He didn't do any of that. Who do you think you are? Some Ask the other members neonate? of my coterie, honored Primogen. And you want to kill one of my clan members? Are you crazy? For sheltering a Sabbat who had caused a masquerade breach in the red number five. Oh, so you were the person who set the entire club on fire? I don't believe property damage falls within the uh, traditions of the Camarilla. Prince you Jackson, are fucking crazy. I, I am permitted to ask for a reward. You said so last night, and I demurred at the time, but this is the reward that I seek. You can ask my truth. You can pry into my mind if you want and extract it from you. I know you'll have the gift to do that. And you will find that what I am saying about Brett Stryker is absolute truth. Malenkov was hiding at his club. Prince Jackson looks a little taken aback by what is happening but he steps forward and walks towards you. Now, now. Uh, easy. Uh, I have no interest in looking into your brain, Dolph. I am, however, interested in looking into Brett's mind. Uh, I don't know how damaged he is. Is he... Brett, do you have anything to say for yourself? And he gets so close that he lifts the mask off of Brett's face and... What comes to show is um, not even a face anymore. It is a burned mess. It looks like a piece of meat that's been on the grill for too long. He, both of his eyes are shut, uh, covered in lacerations. He even still smells of burned flesh when you get really close. I actually recoil. Prince Jackson, I don't think you're going to be able to make eye contact with him or extract any truths from him. And so once again I say this is the only reward for which I ask. But how am I supposed to know if you are telling the truth? 
We have been given the ultimate decision regarding La Sombra here, which implies a certain measure of trust. And if you do not trust me, I have two other coterie mates who can explain exactly as I just have that it was this Toreador's club where we found Malenkov, where, if we had not burned the club down, another great masquerade breach would have been found because he had massacred probably half a dozen mortals within that club before we even dealt with him. Was it not just a coincidence that Malenkov was in that club? It might seem so, except Mr. Stryker here spoke to me at the Succubus Club just a couple of nights ago about matters of which only Malenkov would be aware. Something, an exchange that we had on our way from the airport into the city. And that was when I realised that Stryker must have had previous relations with this La Sombra. Again, my coterie mates will back that up. You two, he points at Alan and Vincent. Get over here. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, certainly, uh, yes. And I come over. Dolph here keeps telling me that you know more about this case, and I want to know everything I can possibly know before I send someone to their final death. Of course. So what do you have to say? Well, all I can say is he is right. We did find Malenkov in the establishment, the establishment owned by Mr. Stryker here. In my own mind, I am thinking, what the hell, what the Red Stryker, that was his place, Dolph. So, yes, my prince, it was indeed his establishment, and one could argue that already that night Malenkov had destroyed another Elysium. You would think a keeper of an Elysium, if that place even was an Elysium, registered, would know of such things. In short, it was his responsibility. Plus, yes, we all know a certain rumour was started about some of the proceedings with the La Sombra delegation. Someone must have known something. It seems Brett was the one. So yes, I would say harbouring a La Sombra who at the time was acting very much against our city. And yes, I can personally confirm the bloodbath was significant, and happening in a VIP room, which to get access to, one would at least have to talk with the manager and pass several checks. And, uh, Vincent, do you not believe that it was just a coincidence that Malenkov just so happened to be at his club? No. How could it be a coincidence? He walks in. Unless, of course, Brett is simply guilty of incompetence. Well, Extreme it's... incompetence, if that is the case. I mean, Malenkov cut a very obvious figure. And as, in fact, I had not even thought of that. Vincent, you are much smarter than I gave you credit. He had access to the VIP area. One would assume that would require going through Brett. And he was supplied with a number of mortals sufficient to, as Vincent described, cause a rather major bloodbath. If a single mortal had caught sight of that after Malenkov's departure, we would be looking at a masquerade breach worse than what happened at the Red Number 5. It wasn't just a single murder through a sloppy feeding. This was a mass murder. Very true. And keeping in mind, again, the good folk at Red Number 5 were on Malenkov as quick as they could possibly get on him. In this case, if we hadn't found him, Malenkov would have simply enjoyed the rest of his evening. No disturbances. I want to hear Alan. Alan, uh, what do you have to say about all this? Well, Jackson, I, I, um, all I know is that we were at this club and we found him like this in a big room, which appears to be some... Well, from what we heard earlier during the evening... At, from the owner of red number five was that um from bennett was that malenkov was looking in, in into buying sexual favors things like that and he couldn't find it at red number five so we moved on to the backtrack club and 
apparently he was in a room which where such things were supplied and then clearly made a, an absolute mess of it all whereas you know Brett was complicit into all this I, I, I really couldn't say I, I have no idea Ellen do you believe that incompetence is enough to have someone meet their final death uh, no I glare at Alan no 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 I mean if, if you if you if, if your own incompetence leads to you killing people then sure but if there's someone else Dolph you, you I, I think you're taking this a bit too far what is he taking too far Alan, what's going on here? <laughs> well, I I, 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 tell me the truth, Jackson. I, 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 I honestly, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why Dolph is so possessed with this character. I, I, I haven't heard him talk about him before, but this, to me, seems a bit extreme. Why he, he, he want, want someone dead just because of what you now say? It's, it's, it's Malenkov who, who's, who's the culprit. That's all I know. That's all I know. I look at them both. If I cannot even be rewarded with the death of a traitor to the Camarilla for my loyal service to you, Prince Jackson. Look at him, Dolph. He's barely living. And given enough Vitae, as I'm sure Primogen Annabelle will feed him. Because someone's going to have to feed him. He will recover. And when he does, we will have a snake in our midst. So, from this snake... Why is snake, he a snake? Why? Because ha, have he was you, have incompetent. You not been, I do, do not know why you are so convinced that he was incompetent, Prince Jackson. Well, you said that yourself, doll. No, no. Those are words you used. I said that he was complicit. That he was spreading rumours that he could have only heard from Malenkov at the Succubus Club that what rumors? he was the person who was spreading the rumours that there had been a diablery. And how do you know this? I spoke to him at the Succubus Club. And it stood to reason that he knew, heard that from Malenkov because Malenkov was then found in his company. So not only is he trying to sow seeds of dissent among the court, he is also harbouring a sabbat, La Sombra. He is also covering up a masquerade breach, while well, not even covering it up. We had to do that with a convenient fire. So if all of that can be chalked up to incompetence, I would love to know what one would have to do in this domain to be considered a traitor. What do you think, Vincent? We have a yes, we have a no. Again, if anyone was watching very carefully, they'd see one of my fingers just twitch. But I keep my composure. I'm very good at keeping my composure. I can only present my prince what I know. I disagree with Alan on one thing and say that it's not pure incompetence and that he didn't know this would happen. He was at the meeting, knowing that the La Sombra delegation was here, that one was missing. So it's not as if it was just a neighborhood vampire visit. He knew a La Sombra was in his domain. And he supplied them with the means to cause great distress. What would he have done if we had not arrived, one wonders? Would he have sorted everything out himself? It doesn't seem that way. Prince. So what do you think? Hmm? Should we kill him? I would leave that up to you, my prince. You're the only one who No, can... no, no. No. What do you think? <sighs> it doesn't really matter what to me. What do you think? It should matter to you. This is a matter of life and death for fellow kindred. This is a matter of a possible traitor in our midst. Well, yes. Yes, I would say death, then. Yes, I would. Yes, if he's spreading malicious intent, incompetence... Rumours, he seems to have angered Dolph greatly, and Dolph has done a great service for the city. So yes, that would be my opinion, my prince. There you go, my opinion, yes. Very well. I've made my decision. Dolph. I believe that there is more to this case than what you are telling me. 
I believe you have a grudge with this person. Maybe rightfully so, but that doesn't matter to me. What matters is the security of the Camarilla and this city, which has been greatly exposed, especially with the vote tonight. I think we should be overtly careful with who we can trust. So Dolph, I grant you the permission to punish this individual however you see fit. With the exception of having him meet his final death. And that is my final decision. He turns around and leaves. I just look at Dolph for a moment and sort of mouth. I think that's the best you're going to get. I look scared and uh, unsure. I look thoroughly pissed off. I'm going to call a taxi for myself and Brett. Alan, Vincent, thank you very much. Alan, disappointed. Vincent, thank you. I don't truck in boons, Vincent, but I owe you. I mutter under my breath. Don't worry, we'll talk about that later. It would be nice if you'd mentioned that Brett was in the Inferno, but... It's fine. It's fine. Besides, I agree with you on one thing. He... I'm really hoping he was indeed the one spreading those rumours, and while you were the main target of them, it still tarnishes us both. So, yes, no problem. Enjoy your uh, time with Mr. Mr. Stryker. Yeah. I, uh... I hope you... Satisfy your need for vengeance. Oh, come on, Alan. It's not vengeance. It's justice. We're loyal hounds of the prince. We do what we have to do to defend this domain. And because the prince doesn't have the balls, it seems, to deal with a traitor, we have to. Because the prince won't make any decisions himself, because he's clearly afraid of public opinion. I hope you're right. Good luck and um, see you around. Yeah, give me a call. Good evening, Dolph. Good evening. Good evening. So where do you take bread? I'll take him to the docks. Well, it doesn't take long from where you are. He is looking unhuman, inhuman. He is just stumbling around. He doesn't know where he's going. He can't see anything. Every time he makes a sound, it's a... Brett, I know you can hear me in there. Dove. You said some very nasty things to me at Elysium, and you knew that this was going to happen. You knew that you were going to get a rise out of me and that I would have to pay it back, and I really don't know what you thought you stood to gain by trying to belittle me. Maybe you wanted a makeover like this? Perhaps you thought some scar tissue might hide that nose of yours? Well, you'll be pleased to know that you can now wear an assortment of interesting wigs because most of your hair is burned away. You'll be pleased to know you can now renovate the Backtrack Club as I'm sure you've always wanted to because it's been burned down to its foundations. Hmm. I'm not a sadist, Brett. I've been given leave to do whatever I want to you, short of causing your final death. That may be some comfort to you that I'm not a torturer, and apparently neither am I allowed to be your executioner. But as I'm not interested in having a potted plant in my apartment that looks like you, well, I'm going to push my luck. 
because recently I've been very lucky. And I don't think anyone's going to be asking after you now that you're in my care. So, I'm not going to do what the prince has asked me. I'm not going to abide by his rules. I'm going to lay you down on the pier. I'm going to jam my fangs into your throat. And I'm going to drain every inch of you into my gullet. Just like I did to Genghis. Just like you were telling everyone I did to Genghis. But the difference is now, Brett, no one is going to be talking about how I did this to you. Then you can stay with me forever. I push him down. He falls to the ground very easily. He's holding his hands up in front of him. He can't see anything, so he's trying to protect himself as well as he can. I swat his arms away like the flailing limbs that they are and dig my teeth deeply into his throat, biting through the gristle, what once constituted his windpipe, trying to find a jugular, not that it matters over much. He's dead, there's no blood flow there. But I want to find something that my teeth can find purchase in. I'll press one hand down on his face, just pressing and pressing, pushing hard. And I'll use my other to just keep those arms at bay. And I will drink, and I will drink, and I will drink, until there is nothing left of this mutilated freak. And you feel... Just like the first time you did this, just like the first time you emptied a vampire of its vitae. It's a rush beyond anything, but now it's different because not only is it the second time you do this, it's like a familiar warmth. It's like coming home to your parents and getting that favorite meal of yours you used to get as a kid. It's like experiencing Christmas Eve with your family. It's like seeing a loved one you haven't seen in years. It's that familiar joy. And on top of that, it's sweet vengeance. You get exactly what you want. Additionally, you break rules. You don't obey by any Camarilla law. You don't obey by any prince. You are your own now. It's just you and Ada forever. No one else, no one to tell you what to do. You don't care what your coterie thinks of you. You don't care what other people think of you. All you care about is this moment right now and right here. And you're feeling all of this as the Vitae is flowing down your throat, filling you with immeasurable strength. You are superhuman. You are above and beyond. You are getting stronger and you want more. His body stops to move. He goes limp. And slowly but surely he starts to disappear into a grayish dust. It starts from his fingertips, the bottom of his feet. I pull back to take in the show. Once he's nothing but ash, I kick clumps of it into the lake. Well, I dust myself off, or I dust the brett off of me. Time to get another taxi and head on home. Quite a story for Ada. I should get home, Ada is greeting you at the door. Hello. You're home early? Hmm. We wrapped up quickly, had a meal, and now I'm back. What's all this? She finds some dust on, on your shoulder. Have you been... You smell like fire. Uh, smokers, you know. Oh, yeah, of course. Sometimes you have to associate with such as disgusting people, but... Doesn't matter. I'm going to have a shower, get changed... Wipes off this sauce. I think I've still got sauce around my mouth. I'm sorry. What a sight I must make. You look handsome as ever. Don't worry. Mmm, I feel potent. Oh, well that's good, I guess. You look like... Why are your pupils so dilated? I'm excited, Ada. I think... Skit, skit. 
I think we're going to... I think things are looking up. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get some energy out of my system. Uh, excuse me, I'm just going to head into the shower. Okay. Enjoy yourself in the shower. I take a quick shower. I don't bother with the usual beauty regimen afterwards. I'm still feeling pumped, energized, electrified. I see Ada there. Ada, how long has it been since we last had sex? Um, uh, we haven't had any since I got out of the hospital, I suppose. Well, no. It's been much longer than that, hasn't it? My memory isn't that good, but I assume... Well, come here and kiss me. And she walks over and kisses you, and she can feel just, it's like... a an electric energy coming from you. It's beyond anything she's she's felt before. Are you grabbing me a little tightly there? <laughs> mm, do excuse me if I strike you just gently. I'm feeling feeling well for the first time in a long time feeling like I used to. And Dolph goes on to take Ada roughly but lovingly. Ellen. <sighs> Ellen, you and Vincent are standing the two of you. You just saw Dolph disappear into a taxi with someone you both know he's going to kill. I kind of, uh, <laughs> I look around, I adjust my suit a little again, I look to Alan, quietly, saying, Well, Alan, I didn't think you had it in you, uh, <laughs> quite gutsy, standing against Dolph there, not that clever, really, but I, 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 I appreciate the sentiment. What do you mean? You think he's gonna come after me now? Probably. He might. Look, Alan, here's the thing. I know that you and Dolph had a bit of a thing, and we really haven't had much of a thing because I've been a bit mean to you initially, but I actually think my way improved, you know? Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Dolph. He is a loose cannon. Unpredictable. You just saw that? In front of the prince, in front of every single kindred in the city, he just blatantly, blatantly disrespected the prince, brought up a, a matter like that, and we all knew it was something petty. I mean, I didn't even know the vampire in question. Uh, I didn't know what his issue was, but I can imagine if it was anything like Genghis. You saw what he did to Genghis. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't feel right, man. It's, it's just. He is, uh, he has gone into a really bad place, you know. Gone into? He was already there. You think you've been killing people before this? Well, no, not I don't know about that. I mean just on the route of, you know, being not as clever as he thinks he is, you know? Oh, man. <clears throat> you know, I, I, the person I feel worst for is, is Ada, you know. Oh, how is that going to turn out? It's not... It's not right, man. Badly. But I... Badly, Alan. But it's not your fault. You did your best. I only went along with that at the end, because if we looked both like we were surprised, it... It froze suspicion on us. The earlier rumors of the you-know-what. Maybe suddenly we did do it. Maybe we are covering up for him. So that's why I... You know, it was, it was better for us to at least look united. It would have been better if you had united. But... Again, I understand. You're your own person. That's that's fine. That's fine. I don't think he'll harm you, but it was still... <laughs> uh, he's dangerous, Alan. I keep my eyes open with him. Yeah, I guess. And yes, as for his... Ada, if I were you, don't go down his route. You mentioned you... You mentioned you have a partner, I heard in passing. Yeah, I, I do. 
Yes, well, if I were you, if you really care about them and you don't want them ending up decorating your living room, let them down gently. Get them as far away from you as possible. It'll do you good in the long run. Now, don't worry. I wouldn't rush it. I mean, it's not like they know anything about your true self. That would be a problem, by the way. Can you imagine? <laughs> if they knew anything about it, that's always a bad thing. But uh. in the long run, trust me, Alan, better to distance yourself if you truly care about people. Yeah. Thanks, I guess. And I look around. What are all the kindred doing now? Are they sort of starting to leave, or what's happening? Some of them are leaving, some of them are standing around talking. Well... I guess that's it for our little... coterie and our business together. Well, it doesn't have to be. Remember you're going to perform maybe at the Red Number 5? I go there. We could be useful to each other, Alan. Could, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you, um... were serious there the other day about... You said something about sketching. I... I was, actually, yes. I wanted to... wanted to give a little sketch of you to my sire, actually. I, I think she'd appreciate it. I hope so, anyway. I'd like that. I think I'd like that. Um... Well... I don't know. This is uh, all been quite... weird, you know? Watching a public execution and then seeing... Someone you think is your friend, just keep in, 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 in engaging in, in, into this sort of vengeful behavior. It's, I think I'm gonna sort of call it a call it a night. That's fair enough. You go and get some rest. I'll uh, well, I'd look for my sire actually, and and like we were saying. Dolph has his view on things. I have mine. You can make up your own mind, but try and go with the right people. Yeah. We are the Camarilla. It's the way things work. Everything else, eventually, well, look at Dolph. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Alan. Good night. Good seeing you. And the I'm sorry about Teller. He seemed a good guy. There's actually a little bit of a pause. And I say quietly. Yes. Yes, he was, wasn't he? And, um... I, um... Go find Crook and see if he needs a ride back, or... If he doesn't, I'm, I'm gonna actually call... Michael. Well, you can't really see Crook anywhere. He might have gone someplace else. As you give Michael a call, he picks up immediately. Hey! Hey, how's the, how's the thing going? Yeah, we, we, we're done. Um, yeah? Is it, how, did, how did it go for you? How was your... It was, was good. It was, it was really good uh, to like get out again and uh, just... You know, I yeah. haven't been out of the apartment for years, or not years, days, sorry. I'm like, uh, I'm a little, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little upbeat. I'm just, yeah. Okay. Good well, that's great. <laughs> and I feel already a bit more happy just hearing his voice. And I'm walking along a path along the lake in the night. Listen, I um, I just lost my ride uh, home, I think. Uh, oh. He took the car himself. Um, do you want to come down by the lake? I kind of want to show you something. I mean, yeah, sure. Let me just uh, finish up and I'll be right down. Sure, sure. He gets there in about 15 minutes. Hey, baby. Hey. Hey, uh, are you all right, man? You look a little off. Oh, it was. It was. It was not very pleasant. Some some people in in this society the they're, they're too far gone. Oh yeah. They just uh, yeah. I guess drinking blood from people kind of fucks you up. I think I th I think it does. And it's not gonna fuck you up though, isn't? <laughs> if, if if I get fucked up, Michael, you, all you all you gotta do is chop off my head, okay? 
I can't do that. Don't even say that. I'm, I'm joking, man. I'm joking. I, I, I Listen, I, I just need a bit of humor after all this crap that I, I've been through these last few days. Yeah. I, I didn't get to talk to the prince about my reward yet, but I'm, I'm sure he'll 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 come to it. Um, well, uh, let her arrive at the apartment. Uh, oh. I just, yeah. Uh, I think it might be for you. It just says your name and nothing else, so. Did, did you bring it? He hands over the letter, and you can see it has the prince's stamp on it, or seal. And I um, nod to myself as I just look at it uh, before opening it. Hey, man, do you. Uh, you like animals, just like me, right? Love animals, you know that. There are lots of animals around here in the in the woods and in the lake. Fish, got all all kinds, as you know. Yeah. I I, I got a I got a I got a thing with that. I can I can. <laughs> it's gonna sound weird. I I can call animals. Oh really? I I I can I can I can talk to to. I mean, I thought you always talked to me to him because you know, like. No, no, I, that's what people do with dogs. And any, what a, what animals that live here in in the forest or in the lake w w would you want to see? I, I can call one for you. <laughs> I guess uh, I don't know a rabbit. <laughs> I I thought you were gonna go for a deer or something, but do you do you want me to call a rabbit? I'll call. call sure. A rabbit. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. And uh, I take his hand, and uh, I look uh, out at the moonlit lake, and uh, then uh, I call all the rabbits in the area, and softly whispering for rabbits to come. A couple of minutes passes, and you kind of doubt if anything is going to happen. Maybe this forest doesn't have any rabbits, but then a rustling from the bushes uh, appears, and you see... Uh, Two rabbits just jumping towards you, sitting at your feet, and Michael is his mouth is open. He's staring at them and up at you and down at them and up at you. What? How do you do that? Uh, I don't know, man. It's something that it's 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 come to me. <laughs> just one of the things. It's not all about you know looking horrible and, and biting people. <laughs> Wow, so that's like a, a vampire thing, or...? Yeah, and I sort of uh, touch uh, my breast, and uh, I noticed that I, I didn't get any more hungry from, from doing that, and that's a relief, though I am hungry, but... I look down at these cute things, and I see the smile on his face, and I, it kind of distracts me, and... Uh, that's, that's, that's such a fun gift. <laughs> it, is, it is fun, you know, I, I can... I can talk to them, I can ask them questions, where they've been, or or what's happening in the area, things like that. Even, I can even ask them to, to do things, but they won't even, they won't always do it for me. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. So, I was thinking about us, and us moving to the countryside, I kind of like the idea. Maybe yeah. we'd have some animals, you know? Yeah, sure. I like some some. What what do you have in the country? Like chickens? <laughs> yeah, anything that roams free, you know, and anything really, as long as it be happy. Free roaming chickens. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you want to open the letter or? Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, it looks important. I'm kind of excited to see what's inside. Yeah, and I. Uh, Reach out to, to stroke one of the rabbits, and um, I uh, thoughtfully open the letter. Inside, you can see Prince Jackson's um, logo and his handwriting, and it tells you that he's happy to see that you have uh, talked to your sire finally, and that it hopefully brings you some peace. He also tells you that. Um, from now on, you have a gig every Saturday night at Red Number 5, which you shall attend. Um, and it will be uh, between 9 and midnight. And 
that would be the time for your band. That's your limelight. And that is your gift. Oh. Your reward. Look at that. Looked like I had a have a pretty good steady income now. <laughs> Gig. I suppose I could have asked for more, but it's a start. I mean, that's that's pretty good, man. That's that's one of the biggest clubs in the city. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just I'm just being a spoiled brat, you know, sitting here with you in the moonlight. Yeah, I feel spoiled. I feel uh, I'm so lucky to have you. <laughs> I really am. And uh, I lean over to give him a kiss, and uh, I feel, I feel happy. And a quiet just envelops both of you as you're sitting there. You finally feel like maybe you're finding your peace in this existence of yours. You found your roots. You have Michael. You have plans for the future. It's looking pretty okay. It's pretty okay. Vincent! Hmm. What do you do? Well, I watch Alan walk off. I hope he follows my advice, because, you know, I'm right. And he'll only have pain, I feel, if he goes the way of Dolph's line of thinking. Dolph? Well, I'm not going to cause him any problems. It's not that I'm afraid of him. It's that I just don't want to be destroyed by him. And that's a healthy paranoia that I've been taught by my sire to foster for some time. No, I'll let him do whatever he wants. As long as it doesn't affect me. Who knows, maybe we'll even work again. Together. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but my sire, she was going to be here, and I want to see her... That, that'll make me feel something. And, and then an award! I'm gonna get an award. Uh, hopefully. Uh, hell, a lot of kindred tonight have seen me speaking, and that's something. So, yes, where is she? Where is Jennifer? She's not here. She's long gone. Oh. As is your entire clan. It's like they disperse pretty quickly. Hmm. Interesting that they'd all depart. Who's even remaining at this point, then? A couple of Nosferatu. Uh, you recognize uh, some Arcavians standing around. <laughs> well, Nosferatu or Malkavians, wonderful. Um, oh, I go to one of the Malkavians. I pay attention to things sometimes. Ah, interesting. Where, where did all the, the, the Ventru all seem to leave in a hurry? seems. I mean, yeah, I guess they just didn't find any reason to be here. Do you know which way they voted, out of interest? Which way did your clan vote, out of pure interest? Oh, we voted no. Oh. Are you crazy? Well, not really. Jason would never. Jason would never. Ah, yes, you're, pr you're primogen. Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, that's Fair enough. What about my lot? I wasn't actually paying attention. I assumed, yes. What's your lot? I don't know you. Oh, sorry. Uh, a little part of me bristles already. Like, I just bloody spoke up for everyone. Uh, Taylor. Vincent Taylor. You've heard of my uh, galleries. Yeah, but what clan? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, Ventru. Ventru? I think they voted yes. It's a little controversial for your clan, isn't it? It was a little. It was. But I think Bella just kind of liked the idea of a young La Sombra murdering their elders. I mean, isn't that what you guys are all about? Like, you know, ages and who's the oldest and and the young ones are nothing and the older ones are everything and. <laughs> I'm already internally getting a little bored of this uh, individual's rambling. I say, yes, that's pretty much it. Well, you have a good evening. And I start to walk off, and I better do this now. A Nosferatu. There we go. Uh, which one? Uh, th that one over there. Um, good evening. 
I was wondering if I could get a moment of your time, Mr. Uh... Um, I'm a, I'm a girl, but oh. people often mistake me. Sorry, miss. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we said yes. Uh, we thought that we can maybe, like, learn from them. So... Oh, I see. Of course. Listen, miss, I was wondering if I could ask a favor. Maybe you know how to get in contact with your primogen, maybe? Cedric? Yes, or maybe even you can help. I, uh... Yeah. That depends. I'm willing to pay. Oh, uh, okay. What do you need help with? Information, of course. I, uh... A ghoul of a certain... Miss Jennifer Strauss was brutally murdered just the other day. Oh. Uh, in uh, the high-rise apartments in the center of Chicago, and I would like any information I can, really, to find out who did such a deed, you know? Oh, yeah, uh, sure. Um, I can help you with that, I think. Well, thank you. I, Wonderful. I can, I can, I am pretty good with computers. And you are? Um, my name is Cecilia. Cecilia. Oh, yeah. Nice name. I... Could you give me your address so I could maybe, like, or like a phone number or something? Certainly. I give her my card. Oh, you're the guy with the art galleries. Yes, are you actually you a connoisseur of the arts? Uh, no, I just like pictures. They're pretty. Pictures are pretty. Yes, of course. Um, I would be most grateful for your assistance. I can pay. And yes, any information your clan has on it, I really would like to know. Uh, who? Sure. Well, who invaded my haven, basically? <laughs> yeah, I get that. I would hate that. I mean, I live in a basement, but it's kind of like my basement, you know? I sort of give her a bit of a look, sniff, and go, Yes, of course, your basement. Sure, buddy. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yes, be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Have, have a good night. Yeah, you too. And I sigh a little. Well, I make the action of sighing. Again, it's a strange instinct I still do sometimes, even though there is no breath to sigh out. And I'll go into my car and begin driving home. As you reach home, you see a figure sitting on the staircase to your apartment. I... It gets up when it sees your car. I frown a little. I'll take a moment to park the car in the parking bay, obviously, and I'll just start walking back out. Is this figure still there? It is. It's standing up and looking at you. Good evening. Hello. Oh, um, hi. I, are you, um, Vincent? Who's asking? I'm supposed to be your new, um, servant. And now you recognize her. You can see that this is Tella's daughter. I... She is looking quite nervous, um, shifty-eyed, but reaches out a hand. It's a, it's a pleasure to um, uh, meet you, sir. I don't shake her hand. I look at her for a moment. You see Tella in her. You see Tella on her from top to toe. The eyes, the expression, the timidness. It's absolutely a product of Teller. How old is she? She is, uh, you'd guess she is around 16 or 17 years old. Uh, I feel a little unpleasant at that, because she's my new servant then. Uh. I'm supposed to give you this letter, sir. It's from your um, sire. It is? Yes. Oh, well, give it over here, then. Uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, come, come upstairs. Come on, quickly, girl. Hurry. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yes, sir. Should I... Do you have any bags I should carry? No, I... No, actually, I don't have any bags. And, 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 tell her never... Well, sometimes he picked up bags. Uh, uh, that's fine. Up you come, quickly. And I'll quickly get in the elevator, riding up with her, feeling very awkward. This is... I, I'm not sure what to make of this. I, I feel guilty. I don't know why I feel guilty. Why would I feel guilty? But I, I do. Hmm. Okay. 
We arrive at the apartment. I enter. I tell her, right, well, y you hungry, I guess? Hung- uh, yes, uh, a bit, sir, but I, I can find my own food. Good, well, there's some in the- there should, might be some in here, actually, I don't know if tell her you're- How did you- How did you- why- Who sent you, my sire? Miss Jennifer Strauss, yes. How do you know Miss Jennifer Strauss? Well, my father knew her well, and we've, uh, my family have known her for many, many years. We've always served the clan, so it's only natural that, well, usually we are over 18, but it's only natural that we continue to do so. So you've known about this all for... How long have you known about this sort of thing? All my life, sir. Your whole life? Oh. Yes. Well, as long as I can remember, naturally. We owe the clan a... I believe it's called a boon. Um, we call it a service. Um, I don't know how much my dad told you about our past, but... Well... We descend from a prolific hunter, and one of the members of your clan stopped her and made her and the generations to come after her serve the clan for as long as they saw fit as a, I guess, a vengeance. I generally... I'm listening to that quite intently. A little part of it rings a bell in my mind, I think. I, I think I had heard of the idea of ghoul families, but I didn't really... I don't think I even knew they still existed, uh, to my knowledge. I see. Well, that's actually quite interesting. Are you sure you're... You're, you're rather young. Uh, are you sure you're not concerned about... You're drinking the blood, right? Uh, sometimes, sir, yes. Kind I just began recently. Kind of messes around with the aging process. It, it does. I, I'm aware, sir. My, my father told me everything I had to know. I see. Should they tell you how your father died? I'd rather not know, sir. <laughs> Clever. Yes, that's a good way to do things. All right, well, you go find yourself something to eat, and and don't worry about having to do anything. Uh, we can talk about that later. What, what was your name? Um, my name is Sarah. All right, Sarah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll take that letter now. Well, I, I already have it. <laughs> Yes, uh, and thank you for your service. My sire appreciates it. Well, um, there was another letter, but this one is from, I believe, uh, Mr. Jackson. Ah! Well, all right, let's read my sire's first. We can't keep her waiting. You know, she's very, I mean, obviously you'll be doing things not just for me. Uh, some, you'll be reporting to her directly most of the time. Yes. Uh, you already know that. Of course you do. Yes. yes. Right. Okay, Sarah, thank you. Uh, and I sort of awkwardly turn away, and looking at the skylight, I read the letter from my sire. It just simply says, it's easier when they're younger. Hmm. A little part of me actually finds that slightly distasteful. And it's funny because as I think of it being distasteful, there's some weird that thing in my head saying, but that's what Josiah wants, and you do what she wants. Okay, I'll read the second letter. The second letter is uh, the letter from Prince Jackson, and it is your reward from for everything you've done. And he wants you to host the next three Elysiums in the city, in whichever fashion you like. 
and you can use uh, whatever means you need from the prince and whatever he has in his service to make that happen. It would make your name stand out and everyone will remember you. Ha. Uh, yes, just would. Even the, the Toreador Primogen will have to, you know, I mean, I'm already on average terms with her. She'll have to accept that this is truly an honor. And it's better than being a keeper of Elysium because then your keepers of Elysium have to organize the thing all the time and keep all the... Well, be a bit like Mr. Brett Stryker, for example. No, this is good. I can do this. Get Clara involved, get some good names in, some good mortals. You, you need a few good mortals at these things. And then, yes, find some good venues. I look to Sarah. I don't know if she'll be much help, but she can at least do as she's told. She will do as she's told. And I'm going to... I'm going to be nicer to her. I, I, I'm going to be nice to Sarah. I owe that to... to tell her. It's his daughter, after all. Yes. Ghoul family, how peculiar. I'm going to begin moving to my room. I'm going to pick up my phone. And, slightly hesitantly, I'm just going to phone Sire one more time. Yes, Vincent? Hi, uh, Sire. Thank you very much for the interesting new addition to the... Well, isn't she adorable? Yes, a little young, but but good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, a whole ghoul family. You, you never mentioned that. How, how intriguing. Oh, yeah. I guess I forgot. It's fine. Uh, it's how it is, you know. Of course. Yeah. I suppose you saw me tonight. How tragic with her father. That poor little thing. Yes. Oh, well, I hope she serves you well, and if she gives you any trouble, just let me know. I'll punish her accordingly. Oh, you could do it yourself. It's up to you. I mean, I guess you're used to tell her. Yes, I d I'm sure that won't be a problem, sire. Uh, did you see me tonight, then? Uh, the prince giving me the, the the honors of the vote and speaking everyone, and he's giving me free Elysiums. Free hostings of Elysiums, anyway. Oh... Oh, well, I'm very proud of you. Yes, I did see it all. What did you think? Um, what did you say again? Oh, I... <clears throat> I said uh, what the Sombra wanted, I gave our vote. There was even a silly moment where I, you know, was asked to pass judgment on another kindred's life. <laughs> what was... Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, that was wonderful, what you said. Uh, it touched me deeply. <laughs> I know you might be busy tonight, but could I... Could I come by later? It's been a while since we've spent any time together, really. Um... Sure. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> yeah, I have plenty of time. Just be here quickly and... Of course, yeah. I Of course. Right, right away. Uh, <clears throat> see you soon. I hang up the phone. I look to Sarah. I say, Sarah, you can... Oh, oh you do have a home, don't you? Still? Uh, yes, uh, Jennifer, uh, Miss, Miss Dross, um, provided me with a loft room. Oh, lovely. Well, tidy up around here and uh, uh, you can go. I, I won't be needing you for the rest of the night. Thank you, thank you. And I go into my room quickly to brush myself up and uh, I just look at a picture picture just by my bedside that is of my father. I go over to it. Uh, I never in the end had to deal with this issue and so I maybe seems to have forgotten all about it which is good. I'll put the picture away in the cupboard. I think about calling him. I won't. I have my sire to see. Things are going to be good. Yes. Very good indeed. And as you look at the picture, you you can't help but think of Sarah. She doesn't have a father anymore. But just maybe maybe you can make up for the times that you didn't really listen to Tella that much or 
times that you didn't feel like you treated Tella the way he should be treated. Maybe this is your chance. Maybe if you become a tutor, a father figure for Sarah, maybe, maybe then you can pay back. Yes. You feel a sense of lightness, happiness. You're going to see your sire. For once, she seemed like she maybe actually wanted to see you too, which is great. You made yourself known to the entire kindred society. You are going to host Elysium three times. Things are going to be good. They're going to be good for you. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the chronicle The Sacrifice from Chicago by Night for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Chicago by Night is published by our friends at Onyx Path Publishing, and Vampire the Masquerade is published by Modifius. Our storyteller was Clara Horsher Herbal, and we were also joined by the gentleman gamer Matthew Dawkins. Check them out on social media and on their Patreons to support their work in the tabletop space. The intro was composed for us by the amazing Simon Kelle, and he has also provided all of the music for this chronicle. Check out his work at simonkolle.com. Sound effects are created by the fine folks at freesound.org and Cernscape. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobear, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, and David for their generous support. And we would of course like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear a name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with Yalmar and Craig. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and see you again soon. <laughs>